Meet Yusuf Omogbolahan Feromi, also known as the photo taker. A final year student at the University of Lagos, Yusuf has been capturing moments through his lens for seven years, ever since his journey began at Yaba College of Technology. But Yusuf isn't just a photographer. But a wild imagination and an eye for the extraordinary, he sees the world in ways others don't, bringing a unique vision to life in every frame. His self-taught mastery of Photoshop, Lightroom and top-tier camera systems is a testament to his dedication. A creative writer, theme enthusiast and aspiring digital marketing specialist, his story is still unfolding. With God's grace and a passion for creativity, he's ready to leave his mark on the world, one special image at a time. Hi, my name is Yusuf Omogbola Oferomi. I am the founder of The Photo Taker. At The Photo Taker, we um, do videos and we take pictures of all manner of um, events that need to be documented. Um, so, as I said before, I am the founder of The Photo Taker. Um, the Photo Taker is a brand that was um, birthed from let's say, not the most fortunate circumstances. I did not imagine I would be a photographer. But after my dad passed, when I was 14, uh, life sort of changed a bit. And I wasn't, I, I couldn't get admitted into the university at the time I wanted. So I went to the um, Yaba College of Technology to study photography for a year. P.S. I did not graduate. I <laughs> missed a few exams. So, uh, but at the same time, it gave me uh, photography. So my creative process is, I like to say it's a bit weird because I sort of do not have one. I just love taking pictures. So when I get to a place or when it's time to take pictures, whatever kind, I improvise and most of the time, if, I, if there are pictures that are, or videos that I feel like might be difficult, I open YouTube right there, watch like two minutes videos, and I figure the rest out from there. So, but most of the time, or let's say a few times, my creative process revolves around um, doing a bit of research and probably checking out um, similar works from some of my favorite photographers and trying to mirror what they've done and understand it then add my own spice to it so my challenges to becoming the photo taker are numerous but the first one and the you know elephant in the room is money camera um, gear is very expensive so usually you have to you know save up and wait for someone to probably lend you an helping hand to get certain things that you want um my first camera was very cheap and could do almost nothing. Then my second camera was gifted to me by someone else. And it was only at my third camera that I was able to afford one by myself. And even that afford gone is like, you know, somebody still lent me an helping hand. And my other challenges are um, the usual stuff, client acquisition. Um, and people always sort of undercharge, a bit undervalue what um, you are giving to them. So I've had people come up to me and say they want to do photo shoots of about 20,000 Naira when studio space alone going is like 15,000 Naira. So um, it always presents a bit of a, a conundrum of should I, um, do this job just to get some funds or get some headway and get some stuff under my belt or should I consider my value the most? So my successes as um, the photo taker have been many. Most important ones are, you know, when I get the alert for doing a job. Um, but my success really comes from when I see pictures and I like them, I love them. 
my motto usually what i tell my clients when they check pictures are i don't take bad pictures so you know always looking at my pictures gives me a bit of joy not a bit a lot of joy and i've had the opportunity to work with countless um notable people i was at an event for ambody's wives um birthday i've shot numerous celebrities been on amvc red carpets been on uh ashlock red red carpets of recent i did some work for fenty and puma um with um an influencer and yeah that was a major eye for me having to work with a brand like that hi bolao hi banje nice to have you today thank um, you very much please tell me more about what you do um your your name and the name of the brand and for how long and you've been doing this and just tell me something exciting about what you do okay so my name is yusuf omogbalao i am you know the founder of the phototeca or i currently operate the phototeca so um i'm a photographer and a videographer and i you know take pictures and cover events take portraits and take lifestyle images of people i mostly uh my current um space is i'm a personal photographer to an actor while also doing my own gigs so i am a personal photographer to an actor called Adeoye Remide and i also work with a lot of celebrities um i've worked with London produced one of Rema's songs um i also you know i've done some work for NSC Fenty and a couple of brands uh, even though i've not been named yeah i've done some work for them oh excellent it seems like you been doing more of photography in a very unique way more with celebrities and with brands that in themselves a for for lack of another word celebrities and are you if you say you have not been named does that mean that you've not been getting the money that is due to the work that you get, you should be getting um so because i've not been named uh, i no well i've Or been not been named, credited i've not been so i i get credited most times but there are a few stuff that i've not been credited for i always make sure i'm credited that one is for sure but okay. there are certain situations where crediting you will stand in the way of you doing the job so i always there are sometimes you just have to allow certain things to happen and just leave the credit and collect the money and funny thing is for celebrities um you don't actually get paid that much um but you get paid based on the fact that you have worked with a celebrity or you have worked with certain people so it gives you um it gives you a sort a sort of leverage getting average people to um acquire your services because they want somebody that has photographed a particular celebrity so they come to you and say like there's one of there's a client that she just wanted me to take a picture she didn't even collect the pictures because she wanted to meet the person that took the picture of a celebrity that was a true life story interesting <laughs> so i w- what i'm hearing is that there is a it's a two way coin as to what you do in terms of photography the nature of the clients that you have trying to exchange that in itself for credit in exchange for paying you what you rightly would normally charge mm-hmm. right um so that suggests to me that in terms of cash flow for the business right if you focus majorly on this set of clients you may not necessarily attain your full potential in terms of revenue um or the sort of cash flow that you want the business to grow into so my question would then be is how is your cash flow as a photographer personally um i i i don't expect to hear figures specifically i just want to be able to know how you're coping in terms of the trend what is the pattern you know because the mindset to creatives is such that i mean you just use your phone or you just use the camera and it's not costing you money secondly people don't also 
have a deep understanding or appreciation of the quality of the time that you will spend in producing what you have the shots that you have taken so i want to know how that is translating or affecting your cash flow so are you making in 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 layman's terms are you making the kind of money that you want to make I if you are what is the secret if you're not what do you think is wrong okay so i i i'm not making the kind of money i want to make okay and for me currently that's not too much of a problem um because i am trying to develop a system where so the, the major problem is people you have people get in contact with you a lot but they don't they don't they, they very rarely turn over into actual clients right because of the costs because they think it's expensive meanwhile it's not that expensive because if you consider all the things that are going to so people always imagine when i take your picture i that's all taking the picture is the least of my worries going back home to edit and work on them and present them in the way that um captures what you are looking for is it takes most of the time that's two three hours of you consistently working not to talk of how much time you've taken to study and attain that knowledge to make images look like that so in terms of cash flow um i always try to um maintain a certain price for everybody sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't um which is actually okay because if you think about it if um photography is a value-based um industry so based on the value i'm presenting to you that's how much i expect that you are going to pay me and i also try to you know adjust myself based on the economic situation of people i'm working with so sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't um um i think cash flow is is a difficult subject because there are slow weeks there are slow months and there are months where things pick up mm. so it's a bit it's always a bit hard to like put your hands on it that this is how much i'm making and this is how much you know i'm not making so it's difficult sometimes but uh there are good months there are bad months there are good weeks there are bad weeks <laughs> no so i mean thank you so much for your candid um response and i'm happy to hear that um the your reality is such that there are times in which the months are good there are times in which the months are bad i mean broadly speaking in terms of sales of goods and services as well you have your upside and your downside but i think that from what you're saying to me i think there is a need to be more strategic with how you manage your cash flow one i think that you want to be able to be more targeted with your customers because your perception of value would constantly change every human perception of value would is subject to change by time and if you are responding to the pockets of your targeted clients per time it might mean that you are selling the same product at a time for a premium and at, at the other times for lesser and if your customer base gets to realize that what i paid a premium for somebody get it for lesser it would affect the, your reputation as a brand so you want to be able to then take note of that to say you know what for me to be able to do a photo session for somebody of this caliber i need such amount of manpower i need so amount of equipment i need such amount of resources and that is going to cost me this for my own time and the assumed profit that i'm going to make this is my minimum charge what you then need to do is to then look at your customer or targeted audience who are the customers with that paying capacity that then becomes your target rather than going for people who come to you you go to people that you believe have capacity to be able to pay you because by so doing you will be attracting some level of consistency because you now have a group of clients that are targeted that can afford what you are offering as a service secondly because of the nature of what you do which is photography and the amount of photographs 
photographers how they who believe they can take the same pictures who believe of course who would also promise to do the exact same thing you want to be able to identify for yourself in this industry what is going to be my niche am i going to focus more on celebrity photography or am i going to focus more on product photography am i going to focus more on a niche market such as bridal photo shoots such that if anyone was looking for the top 10 best photographer for bridal photography they will mention my name and because i command that much respect he already comes with a price tag so that way you know that week in week out people are always doing weddings you know that week in week out celebrities are always going somewhere you know that products are constantly selling so that that will then help you to significantly improve your cash flow so that you are not relying on the bad months that's how you grow you're going to have to grow your studio you're going to have to empower get more staff get more equipment all of those things how do you then deal with the low seasons if you don't have some level of um consistency with your cash flow also i think that you want to do some sort of a cash flow projections over the next 12 to 24 months and then look at how you are going to be able to attain those financial projections because otherwise when a target is not set then you have a reason to be relaxed to be chilled oh it's just one of those bad months but if you have a target if you have a goal last month we did x amount we want to be able to grow 10 percent month on month over the next 12 months you are driven it's inspiring you to be able to do more and at the end of the day beyond the money you already you're looking at growth you are looking at the capacity to be able to expand your photography business as a whole i think that the uniqueness of what you do um would reflect in doing more of it to a targeted audience that also consider it of value and then they reward you accordingly for it such that you can manage those low seasons better than you currently do i think you're doing a great job and i think that you should put in the best shot at it well done all the best. <music>